I'll introduce myself first. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Marlene Smith, and I am the president of Wild Ones Chesapeake Bay. I am a Xerxes ambassador, a Charles County Master Gardener, and um, I'm looking forward to taking this native plant journey with all the members of our chapter. And I will turn it over to Bill to introduce himself. Hi, I'm Bill Smith. I'm the vice president, vice president, and um, I am a Ma Charles, uh, no, St. Mary's County Master Gardener. Um, I don't, I do the, and I'm doing the videos for Wild Ones. And I'll turn it over to Sue now. Hi, I'm Sue Williams, better known as Nana Williams on Facebook. Um, that's what everybody calls me, not only my grandchildren. I'm a master naturalist, a master gardener, former um, educator, teacher, uh, all sorts of, I do all sorts of things. But now I'm retired, so I have lots of time to spend on other things. Uh, and then I think we go to Lynn next. Lynn Wheeler, your turn. Hi, welcome everyone. Um, Lynn Wheeler. Um, I am the membership chair for Wild Ones Chesapeake Bay. Um, I have also had multiple positions with the Southern Maryland Audubon Society, president, vice president, secretary, currently their membership chair. I'm also the secretary for the Port Tobacco River Conservancy and have been a, a Charles County Master Gardener and um, looking forward to us having fun with native plants. And I'll pass it over to what, Emily? Yeah, I think I'm last. All right. Um, hi, everybody. Nice to, to meet you on, on the screen here. Um, I'm Emily Hansroth. I'm in Huntingtown in Calvert County. Um, I am a certified master naturalist in Maryland. I did that through the ACLT here in Prince Frederick. Um, I also have degrees in environmental science and um, a master's in sustainability leadership. So it's kind of what I do for work and fun <laughs> um, and very much looking forward to learning from you all. And we're going to jump in here to a couple of charts um, just to get to kind of level set us because I know this is our very first meeting or a brand new chapter. And so we wanted to provide a little bit of history about Wild Ones as an organization, um, and then kind of get into, and then um, Marlene will take us through some specifics for our chapter. Uh, so hopefully everybody can see this, the chart okay, now that we've popped that up. Thank you. Uh, All righty, so we'll um, quickly hear uh, just some history. If you haven't checked out the wildones.org um, website, there's a lot of really good information about the organization. So it goes into much more detail there on a lot of the things we're gonna cover today. Um, but it, it we did start as a, kind of an idea back in 1977. If you are familiar with Lori Otto, she um, is kind of the pioneer and the founder of natural landscaping as a movement. And so there was a group of people that was at a talk that she was having back in 1977 and her talk inspired them to say, hey, you know, we would like to do more than just um, kind of have native plants in our yard, right? Like we want to do more, we want to inspire others. And so over time between that period, they, uh, the group decided to call themselves Wild Ones and was officially founded in 1990. Um, okay, I just wanted to make sure you could hear me. Okay, all righty. Um, and so the first chapter started in 1990. It's continued to grow. And the mission of our group as a, as a whole, and, and even our, our charter too, um, is promoting environmentally sound landscaping through preserving biodiversity, restoring and establishing native plant communities, of course. Um, and really focusing on, you know, the ecology of, of what all that means to the environment. So um, if you hop over to the next chart, it gives you an idea of 
across the United States how big Wild Ones is. Um, so the, as of just the last time we checked um, this month, there's 85 chapters across the U.S. You can see how they're distributed here. If you can't see the screen, um, a lot in the Northeast and kind of Central um, Central U.S., but if you scattered across uh, the U.S., um, across 34 states, and then 30, 31 seedlings, which are the younger groups um, that are just getting started and haven't officially chartered. Um, so there there's, seems to be growing um, and increasing in number. And then um, for our group specifically here with Wild Ones Chesapeake Bay, um, history there is uh, we had, actually we are not the original founders um, that are here on the call talking to you right now. Um, Jody Longhill and any of you, and if any of you know Jody um, had started the seedling chapter in this region, it was called Chesapeake Bay Western Shore back in January of last year. So not too long ago. And then she stepped down in October and um, Marlene had seen an announcement saying, hey, there's, you know, this open chapter available. Uh, is anyone interested to, to get it relaunched? And a bunch of us here who have been communicating through different events related to gardening, native plants, um, our Facebook groups that we help to administer, uh, got together and said, yeah, you know, we would love to. It's right up, you know, in line with the things that we that we're passionate about. So um, Marlene brought us all together. We officially chartered just, uh, um, just not just about a month ago um, in December. Um, and so we're, we're officially based in Waldorf and represent um, Calvert, Charles, St. Mary's, as well as Southern Anne Arundel and Prince George's. So um, covering a pretty broad spectrum of the Southern Maryland Peninsula. So pretty excited to, to jump in here. Um, and then on, on our next chart, let me just see, I have too many things in front of me. Um, here's just a quick map of um, our actual, our specific Chesapeake Bay chapter. So we have 33 members. And pretty exciting, we were able to get um, two businesses and two affiliates to join um, just in the last month or so. So for, for those that are familiar with Butterfly Alley and Bonaterra, Chesapeake Natives, and Forest, I don't know, I can't even see that one all the way. Um, the Forest Technology Center, that's right. Um, those four um, are partners and active members within our chapter. So we have details on each of these, um, but for today, we didn't want to throw too much at you. So we just wanted to make sure that as members or as guests that are thinking about Wild Ones, um, that you understand that there's going to be a lot of chapter resources that Marlene's going to go over with you, but there's also a lot of resources at the national level. So a couple of things we wanted to pick out specifically, there is a quarter quarterly journal that you can read online with a lot of really good information and updates. Uh, we'll put links um, and send those out to you in case you can't find it on the website. There's um, design templates for native gardens. One of the things that we were talking about as a chapter was whether or not we um, can find or build some for the coastal plain region for our native ecoregion. Um, there's information about grants and scholarships. Um, it's called the Seeds for Education grant. That's a Wild Ones grant and information there um, at the national level. Uh, the photo that we have here of this great cardinal flower um, is um, from one of the annual photo contests that they run. And so if you're a photographer, um, that's another opportunity to highlight your photos there. And then educational webinars, they host, we'll try to host some on our own and th they'll also host some. So the next um, educational webinar that's coming up is this one on January 27th. Uh, it's at 7 p.m. Eastern with Lorraine Johnson. Um, and so uh, it's free, it's open to anybody who would like to participate, you don't have to be a member. Um, and they will coordinate, I, I'm not sure how many they typically do a year, um, but I know that they tend to do several. Um, so if you wanna go ahead and 
click that QR link on your phone or um, there's information with links on their website to join the first one for the year, which is with Lorraine, which should be a exciting one. Thanks, Emily. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about our chapter programs. And again, um, the five of us founders have just been working on things for the past two months. It's been a really, well, actually, I guess it's three now. It's been a really busy three months trying to get all the background stuff in place for the chapter. You know, that was everything from, you know, setting up Google accounts so we could have email and a shared drive and setting up a YouTube channel and our website and um, just all the logistics that went behind um, starting the chapter. So um, a lot of that, um, I want to thank the founders because we did put in a lot of hours over the past few months and even over the holidays. We got chartered, I believe it was on December 18th, mm -hmm. so a week before Christmas we were scurrying to um, finish up things that we needed to do to get to this point because we thought it would be great to start off the new year, um, especially since there had been members who had joined um, very early in 2023 and we wanted to start getting some things in place to offer them some things. So Sue, do you wanna give a little blurb about the guard chats we have planned? Yeah, we have um, several, I think we have five, five or six, garden chats um, set up through the Zoom links. Um, they won't all necessarily be like tonight. Um, we'd love ideas for topics from members. If you have any ideas, you can send us uh, um, an email and say, I really want to talk about wetland gardening or you know gardens for shades or whatever. And let us know what uh, you might want to talk about. Um, the next one is March 20th at 7 p.m. Um, we will put that information out on the Facebook page and on the website um, so that we can send you a link so that you can join us again. We'd love to have uh, some of the some of you that have expertise in some uh, topic to or you just want to highlight your favorite plant. Uh, let us know, and uh, we'll put you on the list for um, being a mini presenter during one of those garden chats. And uh, we have March and then May, uh, July, September, and November all set up. Um, generally, they are the third Wednesday in the of those months, every other month. And that's Garden Chats. Thanks, Sue. And then I'll turn it to Lynn. Lynn's going to tell us a little bit about our inaug and inaugural guard guided tour. Thank you, Marlene. Yes, I'm very excited to be able to get back to this uh, wonderful location um, and be able to share the uniqueness of it. Uh, you know, COVID for this last three or four years um, we haven't been able to be out to enjoy some of our uh, wonderful habitats. Um, for those who aren't familiar with this location, it's on western um, edge of Charles County, uh, immediately north of Indian Head, um, a huge forest that we were um, luckily able to save from being built on um, back in the 90s, um, luckily the state of Maryland purchased um, all this land, and we now have a 2,200-acre forest. Um, but the real gem of this is the uniqueness of the ecology uh, of this forest, because you have a meeting of the two fall lines basically coming close together, the Piedmont and the Coastal Plain. And um, it, it's a, um, a very unique uh, community of uh, plants um, because of this um, exposure that has occurred uh, of the soil and the sand. Um, so we'll have a talk about that at the historic home, Mount Aventine. 
and um, which is an 1840 antebellum home. And then we will jo- enjoy a walk in the forest and look for ephemeral plants. There is a wonderful, wonderful um, uh, big plot of Virginia bluebells, um, probably one of the largest in the state of Maryland to find natural there. And um, this location has been studied quite a bit, especially by Rod Simmons. I don't know how many online now may be aware of him, but he's done a lot of research at this location um, about this unique shell marl ravine forest. So it'll be fun. We'll, we'll, you know, hopefully have good weather and um, learn a little bit and look for some spring ephemerals. That's it. And um, for anybody who's interested, any of these slides that have QR codes, the QR codes will take you to either registration pages or to websites that have information. We thought it might be helpful for people if they were sitting in front of a screen to just scan with their phone. So that's available for some of our slides. Mm -hmm. And my husband assures me they work. And let's see. Next, we offer educational workshops. So currently, we are in collaboration with the University of Maryland Extension Master Gardeners and Southern Maryland Audubon, and we have educational workshops um, that are focused on native seed collecting, seed cleaning, and winter sowing. And um, we have already had our first winter sowing workshop of the year. That was back in, I think it was January 6th in Waldorf. We had a nice crowd there. That's where I got to meet Jan. And we've done seed cleaning with the um, students at Forest Tech Center in their horticulture management class. Um, it really brought me a lot of joy to see 15 high school students just mesmerized by the different plant structures um, they just had a blast. We went down twice with them, and actually there's a seed, there's a little seed cleaning um, video on our YouTube channel. If you get a chance, you could check that out. And we're, we were down, I believe it was last week or the week before, to do winter sowing with them, and we're going back tomorrow. So they are working on establishing plants for um, gardens that they're designing around their school. And the um, QR code on this will take you to a registration link for our winter sewing workshop on January 27th in Lexington Park. Um, I'm both sad and happy to report that the workshop is full. We have 30 participants scheduled, but there is a wait list. Um, so if you're interested and would like to be on the wait list, they are accepting um, wait list entries now. And that's being done in also um, collaboration with the um, St. Mary's County Public Libraries. We have signed a contract to provide educational events at the libraries throughout the county. We are also going to be working with them on establishing seed libraries. They have ordered their old-fashioned card catalogs that they're going to um, repurpose for seeds and um, it's just something that's getting off the ground, so we'll probably be looking for some volunteers maybe to help in that endeavor. And if you have a seed library going now, Jimmy, I'm gonna probably pick your brain. <laughs> but um, that's something we're looking forward to doing. It's a beautiful collection of Ziploc bags is where I'm at right now, so. Uh, <laughs> so there is a seed library that's, um, is man well it's at the library but there is a master gardener coordinator out in talbot county who kind of oversees it so i'm going to try to reach out to her and um, pick her brain about how they manage things at the talbot county seed library because i think that's kind of a big one i hear a lot about that through the different extension programs i participate in and then let's see native plant shares emily yes. you're up again so um, our first native plant share is June, scheduled for June 1st. We typically will do um, probably at least two a year, usually in the, in the spring and the fall. Um, we do this through the Southern Maryland Native Plant People Facebook group. And this specific one in June 
will be um, with the American Chestnut Land Trust. So it's right kind of in the middle of Prince Frederick. If you've been there before, um, it's right by the, the um, Double Oak Farm barn. But if you haven't, um, we will have the address available for you. There is a pavilion parking um, and an outhouse available, restrooms available. So um, it's a nice, it's a nice open area for us. They also have 22 miles of trails. So if you want to come early or stay late, there's plenty of hiking to do at ACLT. So it's a nice spot. Um, you don't have to bring anything, um, but it is native plants only. So if you do choose to bring something, we ask that it's native plants or seeds. Uh, but if you're new or you just don't have time, time to go digging in your yard for anything, we usually have plenty. Um, so just bring yourself if you don't have anything to share and you will quickly accumulate things to share next time as we are learning. Uh, so we'll have more information about that uh, coming out um, in the next couple of months. And we do try to move these around uh, throughout Southern Maryland. We did one in North Beach. We did one at Jug Bay. We did one um, down near Hughesville. Uh, oh, and um, Maxwell Hall. Maxwell Hall, yes. One of the store comes here in Charles County. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and also mm -hmm. if you know of anywhere that doesn't charge, um, we, we are willing to, to um, pay a fee, you know, for some of these we have, but also um, always looking for different places that we can kind of scatter ourselves around the Southern Maryland region. So open to yeah. other ideas for locations. And we basically like a pavilion. Uh, so in case it rains uh, and some tables so that people can set their plants up mm -hmm. or sit or, you know, do whatever. This particular picture is from Jug Bay. And that was our last one in the fall, right? That was the fall swap. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was the swap. Okay. And we'd like to be able to offer garden tours to our members. Um, I believe Butterfly Alley would be willing to give us a tour. I was hoping Carrie would be on tonight, but um, Carrie has also mentioned she would be willing to talk to us kind of about her lessons learned from trying to convert um, an area of her property to a meadow. Um, I think it would be more like what not to do, I think is the way she explained it to me. So um, we're looking for, you know, just local gardens, members' gardens, or other ones that we might be um, able to tour. And um, if you even want us to come through your own garden, you know, we love to just see plants um, and looking for ideas. Yeah, I think once we start reaching out, we have a lot of contacts in this area. That's one of the reasons I didn't hesitate to jump in to try to um, relaunch this chapter just because of the relationships we had made, you know, all of us through our different um, organizations that we currently worked with, I thought, you know, this was a no brainer that we have so much to offer and we have so many partnerships or people we collaborate all with already. And basically what this slide is showing, and this isn't inclusive of everything, it's just a snapshot of some of the folks that we're currently collaborating with. We've got the University of Maryland Extension Master Gardeners and also the Maryland Master Naturalists. Like I said earlier, we're partnering with Southern Maryland Audubon and workshops. Um, we're having our first um, plant sale at the ACLT. We're partnering with St. Mary's County Libraries on workshops. Um, Nurture Natives is a youth-driven um, organization um, whose mission is to help remove invasives and replace them with native plants. One of their uh, one of our members is. Uh, Esther, Esther Bonney, she's a member, and she's going to do a workshop on um, March 2nd um, at the Lexington Park Library. That's on our calendar of events. We also participate with them um, at Maryland Day at the campus of the University of Maryland, where last year we gave away 400 free trees. This year we're going to probably pivot to um, giving native perennials, just because we're hoping we can grow our own and have something to offer. Um, at the, uh, let's see, it's the Animal Rescue and Resource Center in St. Mary's County. We're working with the St. Mary's Garden Club and the Friends of St. Clements Bay 
to install two native plant gardens. And then we're also partnering with the Lexington Manor Passive Park. They have a community garden where they're renting plots to members of the community to grow vegetables. But we are also stressing to them the importance of having native plants for increasing the pollinators in the gardens and um, the benefits of native plants around vegetable gardens. So we'll be working with them. And a lot of information on these will start coming out soon as they start. Um, a lot of these initiatives have been in the planning stages, but we're starting to work toward where there will be work days um, or other types of um, training types of things that they're offering. So a lot of opportunities will be coming up that we will send out through email and also post on our Facebook page and on our website. Um, so we just want to let you know that we do have a lot of um, um, organizations in the community that we're hoping to work with to enhance the biodiversity in our communities. And then, you know, we showed you all the partners we're currently talking with. Um, there was also ways for you to get involved through some of these initiatives. If you're not a member, but we've piqued your interest and you'd like to join, um, there's a QR code here that if you scan it, it will take you right to a page where you would be selecting the Chesapeake Bay chapter. Um, the benefits of joining, connecting with and learning with others who share the passion for native plants, making an impact beyond your own garden. Um, there are lots of um, materials on the website for members and um, we're just hoping to have fun and to bring a lot of like-minded organizations um, together. A lot of um, things, initiatives may be a little bit disjointed and we find out about them you know, second or third hand, but we're hoping to get ourselves out there in the community so that maybe we're more in the forefront to help bring things together. And then as far as volunteering within the chapter, shortly, um, I guess within the next week or so, we'll be sending out a membership survey. We just like to know a little bit more about our members, like what sort of talents you bring to the chapter that maybe we could tap into or that you'd like to offer to us. Um, We'd like to know um, what you would like to do in the chapter, what sort of things you'd like to see the chapter do that may be of interest to you. So when you get a link to that survey, if you'd please fill that out, I think it will provide us with some great information as we start planning. Um, again, to build and share skills, um, get your hands dirty. Some people, their goal is just to get out there and work. And we need that kind of help too, especially the young able bodies. Um, I'm glad that we have um, nurture natives on the uh, within the chapter because they are teenagers and they're out there recruiting additional teenagers um, to get involved. So we hope to maybe do some um, invasive plant removals and some planting of natives along with them and their initiatives. Um, we could probably use help organizing events, um, staffing outreach tables and booths when we get invited to different. Um, events and those are already starting to come in. Um, I believe in May, May 11th is one of the events that Liz Humes, um, it's a, I think it's a pollinator day in the Laurel area. Jimmy, do you know anything more about that? Yeah, um, that's going to be at the Patuxent uh, Research Refuge, um, which mm -hmm. is a multi- uh, departmental governmental uh, site, and there is a group called Friends of Batoxin that is a uh, kind of a nonprofit support wing because they don't actually get any, nobody gets any funding for this stuff anymore, so they help raise money and support the staff at the refuge, and every year they have a pollinator festival, which mm -hmm. is pretty much what it sounds like. They have programming and tables and stuff like that. And um, it got rained out in the fall, so they rescheduled it for this year. Ah, okay, great. Thanks, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. um, so as we get requests from organizations to partner or to have tables at their events, we'll probably send out emails to see if anyone in those areas might be interested, because um, it would be good for us to get out there as much as we can to get the wild ones named before people. 
Um, it's also if you're technical, tech savvy, we could probably use help with you know things like Facebook, Instagram, the website. And also if you're just the type, if you like to write articles or blog posts, more than happy to take those sorts of contributions to put out in our different social media um, avenues. So whatever your interests are, I think that we could probably use um, any and all of your interests and skills. And please don't hesitate to reach out to any of us. Um, if you were to email, and our email will be on the last slide, um, email the chapter, then um, all five of us have access to the email and we would be sure it gets routed to the appropriate person follow up on. Another way to get involved, um, if you want to make donations, Wild Ones is typically supported through membership dues and donations. A portion of your um, Wild Ones membership dues does come back to the chapter for activities. Um, because we just chartered and we're still in the process of setting up our bank account, but all of your member dues that um, you've paid there's a portion of them that will be coming back to our chapter to help support our events. And you can also make donations directly to national through the QR code you see on the screen, or local donations can be made out by check to Wild Ones Chesapeake Bay. And all that money that gets made out to our chapter will stay in our local chapter to support our local programs. Also, if you're a member um, and there's someone who you might like to have join us. There's always the opportunity to give a gift membership. Um, I believe we've already had a gift membership or two um, within our chapter. Um, it's just another way to get people to um, pique their interest and get them joining us. And basically, as we close, I think all of us know that if we plant natives, they will come. With that, I'll put up our last slide. This slide has ways to connect with the nationalwildones.org. They're on Facebook, um, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, and um, locally. We're on Facebook. We have an official um, chapter page, but we also have a more informal group page where if you join that, it's more of a conversational type of um, group where you can ask questions and post photos. We are on YouTube and we are on Instagram. And um, our email, if you'd like to contact us through email is wildonescheskeepay at gmail.com. And with that, I'm gonna stop sharing. And that's the end of the official presentation. If there's anything we presented tonight that you have questions about, or if there are any questions that we didn't cover tonight, we're more than happy to answer those.